pause the video and try drawing the products here. As usual, I hope that you actually did pause the video and give that example a shot. I began by just redrawing the starting materials. Uh, now let's make some modifications. Where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? The tail of the arrow here is coming from the bond. So I think it's clear that we're going to be moving electrons out of one of these bonds. So I'll start by erasing this bond. Now notice there's no reason at all to erase the other bond. Uh, we talked about this issue before. You should only make the changes that are dictated by a specific electron pushing arrow. Well, this arrow indicates that electrons are coming out of one of these bonds. That means we should erase one of the bonds. Uh, we definitely should not erase the other bonds. There's no electrons coming from uh, that. Uh, incidentally, obviously, of course, it doesn't really matter which uh, bond you take the electrons out of. Um, so uh, if you had felt like it, If you had felt like it, it would have been perfectly permissible to imagine that the pair of electrons that the tail is referring to is this pair down here. If you wanted to, you could have imagined that the tail is referring to this pair, and then you would have ended up erasing this bond. Uh, I hope you can see that these are that this uh, what I've done now is exactly identical to what I had on the whiteboard uh, a few seconds ago. It doesn't matter whether you end up erasing the top bond or the bottom bond. There isn't really any meaning to uh, whether something's a top bond or a bottom bond. Uh, so that that's. Uh, uh, just up to uh, what you feel like doing. Now, um, where is that pair of electrons going to go to? Well, we know that the electrons are moving towards the Z here, because the Z has the head pointing to it. Uh, but is the Z going to end up sharing the electrons in a bond or owning them in a lone pair? Well, the way to tell is to ask, how did the Z start? The Z started by completely lacking the electrons. The Z started by completely lacking the electrons, so since it's gaining more possession of them, it should end up sharing them in a bond. A bond with who? Well, it can really be a bond with either the X or with the Y, with either of the two atoms that were originally sharing the electrons. So one possibility is that the Z ends up sharing the electrons uh, with the X. And the other possibility is that the Z ends up sharing the electrons with the Y. And as we were discussing, uh, in these very uh, simplified examples that I've given you, there's really no way to tell which of these is the correct product. Uh, when we start looking at real-life examples, sometimes we will be able to tell which is the right product. But in this case, where I'm just using very generic placeholders like X, Y, and Z, all we can say is that one of these is the correct product, but we can't tell which one. The electron pushing arrow here really is somewhat ambiguous. Uh, but we know that the Z is forming a new bond. It has to be forming a bond with one of the atoms that was originally sharing the pair of electrons. The Z here is forming a new bond with one of the atoms that was originally sharing uh, the electrons either with the X or with the Y. I'll remind you again that I'm not considering issues of charges in this introductory portion of the videos. Uh, in real life, you would have to adjust the charges on, on the two sides of this reaction, but we're not talking about charges yet. We're just talking about where the bonds and lone pairs are. All right, so clearly this is just another example of a bond to sigma bond transition. Uh, and this reinforces the same lesson that we saw in the third transition. In the third transition, we saw that when you're taking electrons out of a bond, it doesn't really matter whether you're taking them out of a sigma or a pi bond. The arrows look the same. And that was the case here, too. Uh, here we saw an example where we were taking electrons out of a sigma bond to form a new sigma bond. And here we saw an example where we were taking the electrons out of a pi bond to form a new sigma bond. But uh, either way, uh, the, uh, the tail of the arrow was pointing to the bond. Uh, so when you're, uh, when you're moving electrons from a bond, you don't need to distinguish between whether it's a sigma or a pi bond.
Let me remind you again that we don't want to make the mistake, though, of erasing both of the bonds between the X and the Y. I guess that would be an easy mistake to make here. Um, this tail indicates that we're moving one bond. Uh, we're erasing one bond, not that we're erasing both of them. Uh, one other comment. Uh, you might have noticed that I, uh, in these last couple of products, I've been drawing vertical bonds. Uh, previously, I was drawing all the bonds horizontally, and now I've started drawing some vertical bonds between the X and the Z, or between the Y and the Z. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is for space considerations. I'm just doing that uh, because it, it's easier to fit that into the space. Um, we're not talking at all in this series of videos about geometry in any case. Uh, we're not focusing on geometry. Uh, in any case, there's really no big significance in general whether you draw a bond uh, horizontally or vertically. Uh, so there, there's, no, it, there's no deep significance to the fact that I started drawing the bonds vertically over here. I just did that because it was easier to fit them into the whiteboard. I could just as well have drawn them horizontally. Try this example. I started by just redrawing the starting materials, and now we can make some modifications. The tail of the arrow here is coming from the bonds, so we know that we're going to be moving electrons, moving a pair of electrons out of a bond. So I'll go ahead and draw on that pair of electrons. And again, um, it doesn't matter which of these three bonds you focus on. There's no real meaning to whether the bond is at the bottom of the stack, the middle of the stack, or the top of the stack. That, that uh, doesn't have any meaning to us here. I'll go ahead and put the pair of electrons into the top bond, but again, that doesn't have any particular meaning. All right, so since I decided arbitrarily to focus on the top bond, I'm going to erase the top bond over here on the right because the tail of the arrow indicates that the pair of electrons is moving out of that bond. But, again, do not erase the other two bonds. Um, there's only one tail pointing to this bond region, so we should only be moving uh, electrons out of one of the bonds. So we have to leave these other two bonds here. That's quite important. Now, where is that pair of electrons going to? Uh, well, clearly the pair of electrons is going to be moving towards Z. But is Z going to gain them as a bond or as a lone pair? Well, again, our thought process is Z is beginning in the starting materials with a complete lack of any possession of the pair of electrons that we're focusing on. Uh, and therefore, it can only move one step. It can only go from lacking them to sharing them in a bond. So we know that Z is going to be sharing the electrons in a bond. A bond with whom? Well, a bond with one of the two atoms that was originally sharing the electrons. So Z is now going to be sharing the electrons either with X or with Y. And again, it's ambiguous. We can't tell which one. It's possible that Z is going to end up sharing the electrons with X. And it's possible that Z is going to end up sharing the electrons with Y. Uh, the arrow here, in this case, really is ambiguous, and we can't tell which is the correct product. Again, there's no significance to the fact that I've started drawing some vertical bonds. I'm just doing that to save space. Again, this is another example of taking the electrons from a bond and using them to form a sigma bond. And again, we're seeing that um, it's really the same type of pattern whether you take the electrons out of a sigma bond or out of a double bond, or out of, in this case, a triple bond.